to ACP's live remote non-CE offering. I'm Lynn Forney, and I'll be the moderator for today's non-CE course. Today's non-CE topic is typical swallow interventions with synchrony SEMG for timing and coordination, and it will last approximately 30 minutes. It's now my pleasure to introduce our presenter today, who is Valerie Middleton. Valerie is a uh, speech language pathologist, an SLP, and is a clinical program consultant for ACP. Thanks so much, Lynn, and thank you all for joining us this afternoon and hope everybody's uh, having a great week out there. So as Lynn mentioned, our topic today is going to be the use of synchrony biofeedback to address typical swallow interventions. And this is certainly something that we could spend a lot of time on because there are many options with typical swallow, but we're gonna hone in on at least just a, a couple of areas today, looking at working on a patient's swallow initiation timing, as well as their swallow duration and minimizing excessive activity. We do have a handout on this that I just wanted to go through very quickly. And certainly if you would like a copy of this, please reach out to us and let us know after the training. Um, but just to, to highlight a couple of areas here, if we are addressing timing, you know, first we're going to obtain this information through our assessment, and we may be able to look and, and mark if the patient has kind of this delay and in swallow initiation and delay in movement, and we would mark that as a swallow command initiation, really looking at the time that the patient took the bolus or that we commanded them to swallow up until the point just before they actually initiate that swallow. That time there would be their delay that really we shouldn't see anything here. And it looks like, you know, from judging by this picture, this was several seconds, maybe five or six seconds that this patient was delayed. So many of us are used to seeing that on an assessment. And the question really is, what do we do with this information? Well, we have a couple of applications within Synchrony that we can use to address this timing. One of the visualizations being our bow and arrow exercise. And so this would be where the patient swallow is represented by this arrow. And when the patient swallows, the arrow is released from the bow. And the goal is to pop this very first balloon that we see has already been popped here in this picture. And then we do have resultant balloons here that the patient is able to hit if maybe they're a second or two late if you want to provide that range. So I'm going to show you how to do this in just a moment, but to give that example, let's say the patient had a five second swallow delay. So perhaps we made their timing somewhere between three to four seconds that they needed to swallow. And so if they swallow immediately with no delay, they would hit this first balloon. If they had just a little bit of a delay, maybe a couple of seconds, they would hit one of these resultant balloons and they would be able to receive that feedback immediately. You could also receive this feedback objectively for your documentation. So we'll come back to that that. But we also have our work rest cycle, which is going to be very important for both our timing and our coordination that we address with our patients. So instead of having the timing of the swallow represented by balloons, in this case, it would be represented by our work column, which is the green column here. And then our rest column is indicated by this white space here. And so you can see we have a, a patient who is swallowed here and it's outside of the green. So they would have actually missed and been delayed um, from initiating a swallow timely versus for the second repetition where they did swallow within that green space, that would be timely and that would be on target. So the goal would be again, if maybe we had this five second delay here that we would have, we would shorten that time for the work cycle and ask the patient to swallow within the screen. Perhaps that green is only two to three seconds long here. So the patient would take their bolus just before the green and the goal would be to swallow before they are out of the green. And again, we see on the first repetition, they could not, but on the second repetition, they corrected. So that would be more to address timing versus if we're looking at coordination here. And, and this could be for various areas. And you see a few examples here. Um, you know, we may just be working on decreasing some of this excessive activity that you see in this first box here. Um, so maybe getting them to try to reduce lingual movement before their swallow. So maybe it takes a lot of extra tongue pumping and movement um, to initiate that swallow with the bolus before they get to their swallow peak. So here we see that they start with what appears to be about four tongue pumps before the initial a swallow that's narrowed to only two tongue pumps on their second try and then just one tongue pump on their third try. So obviously they progressed each time to reduce that excessive tongue activity activity before the swallow just by having this trace display 
visual feedback. So even just letting it run through the assessment or the trace display under typical swallow can be very beneficial for these patients to, to help them show what they're doing, uh, maybe that's not best form for their swallow and how to improve that. And they can see that progress as, as mentioned here. And then we also may be able to use that work rest cycle again for a couple of different opportunities. The first one being if we're maybe wanting the patient to work with swallowing in between different target levels. And in this case, these target levels are indicated by our dotted lines here. Uh, we have an 80% threshold at kind of the maximum for where the patient should swallow to and our 40%. And the goal is for the patient to swallow in between these two lines. Or you may ask the patient to swallow all the way up to the top line or not so hard uh, to where they're swallowing with only enough pressure to get only just above that bottom line here. So we see the patient provides a little more pressure here in this first repetition uh, versus the second one that's on the screen. And again, this could be really good for those patients like some that you're working on skill-based training, motor planning, maybe your Parkinson's patient or some of your um, stroke patients um, to really work on being able to go from certain types of boluses that require a little more effort or a little bit more pressure than others, right? So for example, for them to take in, you know, maybe a spoonful of mashed potatoes is going to require a little more pressure than it is for a small sip of water, right? Um, and so, you know, having them try these different pressure and effort levels between given targets can be really beneficial for them. And then lastly, something that I'm going to show you here in just a moment with Synchrony, as you see, I'm already uh, hooked up and wearing my electrode and ready to do so. Um, we could also work on their swallow timing or the swallow duration in this case. So instead of working on just that delay in initiation, now we see the patient has initiated a swallow, but they have this excessive movement before and possibly after the swallow that would all be counted as their swallow duration. And again, you would have likely noticed this during your assessment. We see an example up here of the assessment where the swallow duration appears to be several seconds. So in this case, we'll say it was about eight seconds here. And we see all this movement before the swallow. So there's a lot of effort and excessive movement to get the swallow initiated. And then they still don't really quite return to baseline here. We've still got a little excessive movement. So that's similar to what we see down here. You know, we can use this work green cycle to our advantage again, to lessen that time to something, you know, less than what their swallow duration was during assessment. The normal swallow duration time for a small amount of intake around three to five ml, so a teaspoon, would be about one to two seconds for any given consistency. So if you're looking at, you know, over here where it's about eight seconds, that's clearly outside of that normal range. So if we come back here looking at the work rest cycle, you know, we could choose to challenge that patient and make that work time less than eight seconds, right? So perhaps we make it something like five seconds, okay? So maybe we don't want to go as low as two. Maybe that's too challenging on the first couple days for them. But we provide something like a four or five second duration. And the goal would be that they take the bolus here at the beginning of the green, as you see this patient did, um, and that they would be done with all of their movement involved in the swallowing, all of their swallowing, tongue pumping, re-swallowing, any other excessive movements by the time they're out of the green here. And we see with this example, they almost made it, but we do see what appears to be likely a re-swallow here at the end. So there's a little tongue movement before a swallow just at the end of the green. And then unfortunately, another swallow outside of the green versus the second repetition, they did better, right? There's not as much pre um, swallow movement with the tongue movement here. There's one quick swallow and they're back to baseline. So they made it. They're within that four second window there. So this would, again, be able to show them progress and be able to give you objective feedback for your documentation that day. And so there are ways that we can manipulate these parameters. I'm just going to show you this here quickly, and then I'm going to walk you through it for the remainder of our time together. Um, but you see, again, we can change or we can change choose this typical swallow intervention. And then you are welcome to change your visualization here. As you'll see in a moment, it does default to our trace display. You could change it to that bow and arrow or that work rest cycle if that's what you're interested in using for the day. If you wanted to work on something like a high and a low target for those different pressures that we just saw up here above um, in our example, then you may want to edit those parameters for your high and low target of the 80 and 40 percent that you see here. So you could change that. You could make this lower than 80 or higher than 80. You could also make the 40 percent lower or higher as well. And then we also see that we have the opportunity to change our rest 
and work cycle times. And that was really the big one that we noticed in our swallow duration, as well as the swallow timing onset for those delays. And so whether it's bow and arrow or whether it's the work rest cycle, this would be applicable for both. And again, you could make that restoration, you know, it typically defaults to 10 seconds. You could make that more or less. Perhaps it's a patient that needs a little more of a rest break in between swallows. So you could certainly hit the plus sign here and up that time to something more than 10 seconds. Um, and then our work duration, you know, it's, it's going to be set to five seconds automatically on this particular work rest uh, program, but you could change that, right? If their swallow duration time was already five seconds, and of course that's longer than the one to two that we mentioned being normal, you might want to bring this down a little bit and hit the minus button to make it less than that. Maybe you make it three or four seconds to challenge them just a little bit. Okay, so I'm now going to share Syncrini and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So we'll pull that up so we can go through it together. Okay, so I'm just gonna do single exercise for demonstration purposes today. We're gonna select that typical swallow together. And then instead of using the trace display, as I mentioned before, we're gonna change this. I'm gonna go with the work rest cycle first so I can show you the couple of applications we talked about. And of course you can choose your bolus information here. And then we're gonna start the exercise. And We'll just say that I've already done an assessment at this point, and so I'll talk about some of the things that we saw. But the very first thing I'm going to do is just get this pre-exercise, which is going to consist of that resting baseline and three typical swallows. So I'm going to get the resting baseline. Great. Okay, and now I'm just gonna get three typical swallows with the bolus that I'm choosing for the day. Okay, and just like we do with every intervention with synchrony, we're just marking the repetition. Uh, you can do that with your mouse, you can do that with your foot pedal, whichever you prefer. Um, again, I get the chance to review so I can move this if I want to be over at that first peak or second peak. Um, here it doesn't really matter too much. It was kind of all in the same swallow. But you know, if you were to be pretty far off of the peak, you can certainly use your arrows to move and find that swallow peak. Just remembering you can also uncheck one of the repetitions if you don't like that repetition if it wasn't a good example for your pre-exercise. And you could either accept the two that you have or resume pre-exercise to get that final repetition. So I'm going to accept the three that I have. Um, and it's already going to default for me, right? So we're going to talk about editing parameters in a moment. But we already talked about it defaults to five seconds here for our work cycle and then 10 seconds for our rest. So let's say in my assessment that I noticed the patient had a significant swallow delay time of eight seconds. So that swallow command initiation was eight seconds. So as the clinician, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my patient the bolus right here at the beginning of the green, or I'm going to ask them to self-administer right here before the green. And the goal is to swallow in time before they get out of this green cycle to be within that five second window, which again is more of a challenge for them if we found that they had an eight second delay upon their assessment. And I'm just simply gonna mark when they swallow, okay? So we're gonna try that now. Great, so this would be an example of a patient who swallowed just in time, right? They were before we got out of the green. We'll do another one here. Example of a patient who was just a little bit too late, a little bit delayed here, swallowed outside of the green. Let's see what we can get for the third one. Getting better inside the green and even earlier than our first repetition, right? So now I can pause the menu. I can end the exercise. And I can actually come back and view everything that was completed here. So I can go to my graph display to review these repetitions here. This is at the beginning where we were talking a little bit. And now I can come in here and I can actually look at this information. Um, and if I'd like to, I can go in and I can actually edit and look at this timing component as well. But I can see this one's in the green. You know, if I look at the next one, I see it's not in the green. And if I look at my final third one, it is. So two out of three were within the green space here. So I hit my target two out of three times 
for today. Um, so that would be really important to note for your patients, right? If you wanted to provide this information to them um, and for them to see that feedback can be very valuable. Now I mentioned we can also go back and actually measure this time component, right? So if I go back to my first repetition and go to add marker, I can go to add period marker and I can actually start here at the very beginning and I can drag that out until the onset of the swallow here, just like we would during an assessment. And then I can label that, you know, swallow command initiation if that's what I'm looking for. You don't have to do this for all of yours. It's just as simple to know the time component that you put in there and then be able to look at how many are within the green. Um, I think that's the simplest way to do it, but did want to show you this in case this is something you're interested in utilizing to get even more specific information. So we'll just try that for a couple of these so we can see what our average is. And we'll do one more here. So again, it's a period marker. And we'll just place it here, move out and call that a swallow command initiation. So now if I'm going back and looking at my marker details, not only do I have my average of my typical swallow, um, micro voltage, which is not so important in this particular exercise, right? Because we're really looking at how delayed was the patient. But now I have information. Remember I said from our um, assessment, this patient had an eight second delay. Well, now from working with synchrony today with work or a cycle, we see that the patient only has an average of a 3.8 second delay. So that would be significant improvement if this was your patient. And you could certainly notate that. And you see that we have this wide range, right? The, the worst the patient did was over five seconds. The best they did was just under three seconds, almost a normal um, you know, time here because there wasn't much of a delay. Um, so this would be really nice to, to show for your objective measurements as you're writing your daily notes here. So I'm gonna click done for this and just show you one more example of this if we go back into typical swallow. So now I'm gonna look at swallow duration, okay, instead of the timing. And I'm gonna change this back to work rest cycle I'm also going to go to the edit parameters button that we talked about earlier, and now I'm going to manipulate these parameters. So we had talked about before um, that it defaults to the 10 to 5. So let's say I had a swallow duration that was a whopping 15 seconds, okay? So I probably wouldn't want my patient to start at 5 seconds. That may be a little too challenging for them. So I can hit this plus and make it more. Maybe we'll do 10 seconds in this case, all right? And then we'll keep the rest at 10, but again, you can manipulate this uh, if your patient needs more or less time if you want to get more swallows. So I'm going to keep the rest of it the same for now. I'm going to select accept, put in my bolus information, and we're going to start the exercise with that uh, pre-exercise initially. Okay, and now we're just going to get those three typical swallows. Okay, and again, we get a chance to review. If it looks good, we accept. Okay, so a little bit longer now. So the goal for the patient would be to give the bolus here at the beginning of the green, and I'm just going to pause so we can talk about it. Give the patient the, the bolus here at the beginning of the green and make sure they are completed with all of their swallow activity by the time they are out of the green. So I'll try a couple just to show you what that might look like if they hit the target or if they miss. So let's resume. So this was the end. So you can always mark a repetition at the beginning and at the end if you want to go back and then put that period marker down that I showed earlier. You could do a repetition just at the beginning or just at the end if you'd like, whatever makes the most sense to you. So we'll try another one as we come up on this next green repetition. So that one looked a lot better. We didn't have quite as much activity. We were completed and back to baseline before we got out of the green. 
So if we end the exercise now and go back and review these parameters, if we go to our graph display again. So now what we can do is we can count the amount of swallows if we want. We can also replace with adding a market marker for a period marker here. And we can start from the very beginning of the swallow all the way to the very end when we return to baseline here. That entirety would be the swallow duration, okay? And we'll mark the next one as well, just so we can compare. And again, you can do this or you don't have to do this. If you know your time frame, which we made it 10 seconds, right? Um, then you would know what's appropriate for your patient, if they were inside of that or not, right? The first one we missed, the second one we got. But you can also obtain this information to be more uh, precise if you'd like. So now if we go over here to marker details, we can see this information. And again, I, I spoke about the patient having a 15 second swallow duration time when we were in assessment. Now we see that they're down to 7.5 seconds. So that would be improvement. We can see the first one, you know, not as great. Second one we improved a lot on. And this is not unusual for a real patient because as they're seeing this biofeedback, they can really, you know, grasp this concept and understand, okay, I see what you mean. I really need to, to swallow by this point. I need to stop all of my tongue movement. I need to stop the re-swallows the coughing, you know, whatever they're doing um, and be done by the time they are out of the green or maybe before. And then, of course, you can always go back and edit parameters again for this patient. If they continued on this cycle where they're doing less than 10 seconds on average, I would probably, you know, for the next session or maybe later in this session, change their work time to something less than 10 seconds. You know, perhaps next time we could try six seconds or seven seconds to provide even more of a challenge. OK, so I'm going to wrap up with just showing you bow and arrow to give you a little something different. And again, this would really be for that swallow timing. Okay, and so we're gonna go over here again, change to bow and arrow this time instead of work rest. And then we will select our bolus. And I'm just gonna edit the parameters to show you what it defaults to here. And so on this particular intervention, it's actually going to default to having a range of two to four seconds to hit that, that balloon, right? So the two seconds would be the first orange balloon that comes out. The four seconds would include those resultant blue balloons that follow that orange balloon. So you would know, did the patient hit it more on the two second side or the four second side? You can also change this if you want to overlap where it's just two seconds and the patient doesn't have a range. They only have the option to hit it at that specific time or you can keep your range. So I'll show you the range just since that's what it defaults to here. And you can see that, okay? Um, some of the other options you have, they're a little bit different here. Of course, you have your rest period. This can also be a range of time. You know, it's defaults to five to eight seconds. You can make that more. If you felt like they needed more of a up to 10 seconds, kind of like the worst work rest cycle, you could do that here as well. You could also have it overlap. So it's not a, a change each time and it's just, you know, maybe five seconds every time for that rest period, same way as we just looked at for the work time. And then some of the other things that you have an opportunity to, to change here that you don't on some of the other exercises, you know, which direction are the balloons coming from? Is it the, the right of the screen, the left of the screen, or both? So I'm going to keep it on random for both directions, just so you can see what that looks like. And then it does provide a little bit more of a challenge to the patient. But if that's too much challenge or if your patient has a visual deficit, you could certainly select just the right side or just the left side. And then how long do you have until the first balloon is going to come out? And so we'll just keep it with four seconds so you can see what that looks like as well. So we're going to accept these changes. We're going to do that pre-exercise and then start. Again, I'm just marking three typical swallows. Didn't get as much water for that last swallow, apparently. So, all right, so you can review and you can accept if you're good with that. Perfect. Beautiful. Right. Very good. Sometimes Zoom doesn't like the animations. All right, so for just to, to tell you again, you know, my goal is to swallow in time to hit this first orange balloon, but if I'm late, I'll hit one of these. If I'm too early, it will actually shoot before the balloon. So we'll try a few. So it's slightly delayed, I hit the second balloon. That time I was even more delayed. I hit the third balloon. A little too early.
early there. Swallow before the balloon. Got that balloon. So you get this great visual and auditory feedback with the confetti. See if we can do one more here. You can see that time there were four balloons versus two to three that you've seen in some of the other examples. And that's because of that delayed range. So that two to four seconds, you, you may only have a couple balloons or you may have all four. So I'm going to end this just so you can see the results here. So what's really neat is you do have this example of how many you know repetitions did the patient complete uh, in total? How many balloon or how many times did they swallow? You can see that um, there was one that I hit apparently as well that I didn't count, but four in total that were actually on target, two that were delayed, and one that was a little bit too early. So this screen alone can give you some really great information. And then you can come here and see your results as well if you wanted to go into your graph display. Once again, you could actually see where the repetitions are. You can see what's in the what's in the green, what's not. So this was delayed, delayed, a little too early, on time, on time, on time. Okay. So you could really use to count either from that balloon screen or you could come here and look at your results. So that's a few examples of how you may best use Synchrony to work on that timing and coordination. Again, thanks for joining us and we hope to see you again soon. Thanks All everybody. Right.